Hello everyone, this is Ekalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get going. Problem solve d square minus 2d plus 3 into y equals to e power minus x into sin x. So firstly, let's find order and degree of the given differential equation. Identify the highest derivative. Here d square is the highest derivative. So r out will be 2 and highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Or just write the given differential equation as d square y minus 2 dy plus 3y equals to e power minus x into sine x. Right? We know that d is a differential operator. Then d square will be d square by dx square. Now we can write our equation as d square y by dx square minus 2 into dy by dx plus 3y equals to e power minus x into sin x. Here d square y by dx square is the highest derivative. So our order will be 2 and highest power of the highest derivative is a degree degree is 1. Now coming to the problem. Given differential equation, d square minus 2d plus 3 into y equals 3 power minus x into sin x, which is in operator form. f of d into y equals to q where f of d equals to d square minus 2d plus 3 and q equals to e power minus x into sin x. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function, yp is a particular integral. We will find yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. Simply by putting r equals to 0, we will get f of d into y equals to 0, which is a homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. So let's begin with yc. We are going to find yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation. We know that the auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to, we are having f of d, d square minus 2d plus 3. Let's replace differential operator by m. So that will get f of m equals to m square minus 2m plus 3. Then our auxiliary equation becomes m square minus 2m plus 3 equals to 0. Now, we will find roots using quartic formula m equals to minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Just find a, b, c firstly using quartic equation in m. So compare the quotient of m square, we will get a equals to 1. And by comparing quotient of m, we will get b equals to minus 2 and c equals to 3. Now let's use Quartic formula to find roots of our auxiliary equation. Then m equals to minus b minus of minus 2 plus or minus square root of b square minus 2 whole square minus 4 into a into c by 2a is equals to minus into minus plus plus 2 plus or minus square root of minus 2 whole square is 4 minus 4 ones are 4, 4 threes are 12 by 2. 
is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus 12 is minus 8 by 2. Again, we can write square root of minus 8 as minus 1 into write this 8 as okay, write 8 by 2 is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of minus 1 into write 8 as 2 into 4 by 2 is equal to 2 plus or minus now split square root of minus 1 into 2 into 4 as square root of minus 1 into square root of 2 into square root of 4 by 2 we know that square root of minus 1 is i and square root of 4 is 2 so this becomes i root 2 into 2 by 2 now take 2 common from the numerator we will get 2 times 1 plus or minus i root 2 by 2 2 2 gets cancelled and we will get 1 plus or minus i root 2 so therefore m equals to One plus or minus i root two are the roots of our auxiliary equation. Okay, so we got a pair of complex conjugate roots. Therefore, m equals to one plus or minus i root two is a pair of complex conjugate. Roots to f of m equals to 0. Right? Now, let's write complementary function. We know that a plus ib is a complex number. Then its conjugate is a minus ib. Likewise, if a minus ib is a complex number, its conjugate will be a plus ib. So, we can call a plus or minus ib as complex conjugate number or m equals to a plus or minus ib as complex conjugate roots, right? A pair of complex conjugate roots. If we have m equals to a plus or minus ib, then yc will be e power ax into one constant cos bx plus another constant into sine bx. Now coming to our complementary function. Complementary function yc equals to e power for a equals to 1 we'll have 1 into x into 1 constant into cos b into x plus another constant into sine b into x this is equals to e power x into c1 cos x root 2 plus c2 sine x root 2 right so we got yc here now let's find particular integral We will find particular integral using yb equals to 1 by f of d into q. We have f of d and q. Where f of d is d square minus 2d plus 3 and q is e power minus x into sine x. So this is all 1 by f of d into e power ax into some v form. So what we have to do is for a equals to minus 1. We will just shift e power ax towards left by replacing f of d with f of d plus a. And later we will operate v with 1 by f of d plus a. Right? So let's find d plus a. For a equals to minus 1, we will get d minus 1. So we can shift e power minus x towards left by replacing d 
by d minus 1. We will get d minus 1 whole square minus 2 into d minus 1 plus 3 into sine x. This is equals to e power minus x into 1 by d minus 1 whole square is d square plus 1 minus 2d. Minus 2 into d is minus 2d. Minus 2 into minus 1 is plus 2 plus 3 into sine x. This is equals to e power minus x into 1 by d square. Minus 2d minus 2d is minus 4d plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 is plus 3 plus 3 is plus 6 into sine x. Now we are having yp equals to e power minus x into 1 by d square minus 4d plus 6 into sine x. The term under bracket is of 1 by some function of d into sine ax or bx form. Okay. Or we can say the known form 1 by f of d into sine ax form. So here we are going to follow this procedure. See this is not f of d right. We have f of d d square minus 2d plus 3. But this is a function of d so I just named it as g of d and already we have used a so that I used here sin bx instead of sin ax. Don't get confused okay but here we are going to proceed 1 by f of d into sin ax method. Fine. We are having g of d d square minus 4d plus 6 and compare sin x with sin bx then for b equals to 1 we will find d square which is given by minus of b square which is equal to minus of 1 square which is minus 1. Now let's see what happens if we replace d square by minus 1 in the denominator. Okay. I'll take the denominator part and we'll see what happens if we replace d square by minus 1. I'll get minus 1 minus 4d plus 6 which is equal to minus 1 plus 6 is 5 minus 4d which is non-zero. The denominator must be non-zero since by replacing d square by minus 1 we got the denominator non-zero. What happens if we replace, if we get denominator 0 we will get something like this 1 by 0 into sin x since 1 by 0 is undefined so total term becomes undefined. Okay, total term becomes undefined. So always the denominator must be non-zero. But here by replacing d square with minus 1 we got non-zero term. So let's replace d square. Okay, this equals to e power minus x into 1 by minus 1 minus 4d plus 6 into sin x. This is equals to e power minus x into 1 by 5 minus 4d into sin x. So in the denominator we are having 5 minus 4d. If we replace this minus with plus then we will get 5 plus 4d. Let's multiply and divide 5 plus 4d to this fraction. Okay into sin x. yp becomes e power minus x into 1 into 5 plus 4d is 5 plus 4d by 5 minus 4d into 5 plus 4d. I will get it as 5 plus 4d into 5 minus 4d into sin x. Which is equal to e power minus x into 5 plus 4d by the denominator is of a plus b into a minus b. So we can write it as a square minus b square that is 5 square minus 4d whole square into sin x is equals to e power minus x into 5 plus 4d by 5 square is 25 minus 4 square 16 into d square into sin x. 
again d square appears in the denominator so what we have to do we have to see what happens in the denominator when d square is replaced by minus 1 always remember that the denominator must be non zero so let's see what happens if we replace d square replace d square by minus 1 we'll get 25 minus into minus plus 16 which is 41 non zero so the denominator is non zero by replacing d square by minus 1 so what we'll do here we'll just replace d square by minus 1 then we'll get e power minus x into 5 plus 4d by 25 minus 60 into minus 1 into sine x. This becomes 5 plus 4d by 25 minus into minus plus 16 into sine x which is equals to e power minus x into 5 plus 4d by 41 into sine x. Now we'll split the fraction as e power minus x into 1 by 41 into 5 plus 4d into sine x. This is equals to e power minus x by 41 into 5 sine x plus 4d sine x equals to e power minus x by 41 into 5 sine x since d is a differential operator so we can write it as d by dx and in the next step we are going to find derivative of sine x with respect to x this becomes e power minus x by 41 into 5 sine x plus 4 into derivative of sine x is cos x right this equals to minus sorry e power minus x by 41 into 5 sine x plus 4 cos x therefore yp equals to e power minus x by 41 into 5 sin x plus 4 cos x. Now let's write the general solution. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to yc we are having e power x into c1 cos x root 2 plus c2 sine x root 2 plus yp e power minus x by 41 into 5 sine x plus 4 cos x. This completes the problem. So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equation in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Bye bye.